Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what I'm going to do is show you guys the process of setting up a dual boot between Windows 11 and Ubuntu. I figure that now that Windows 11 is out and it's in the wild, that it's finally time to refresh this video. Now, if you have seen the previous version of this video, the process hasn't really changed much, if at all, but I figured now that Windows 11 is out, I want to make sure that I get this updated. Now, I'm going to assume that you already have Windows 11 installed on your computer, and that has taken up the entire hard drive. And what we'll do is go through the process of installing Ubuntu in such a way that it will not replace Windows, but dual boot with it. Now, I'm also going to assume that you've backed up your computer, because although this process has never failed for me, I mean, computers are what they are, and if chaos theory plays a role and gets into the process here and you lose data, well, hopefully you have a backup. Again, this process has never failed for me, but it's always a great idea to err on the side of caution. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into it and set up a dual boot. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And what we're going to do first is create some installation media for Ubuntu. So the first thing we'll need to do for that is to, of course, download it. And we could actually get Ubuntu from Ubuntu.com. Simple enough. And here we have the graphic that Ubuntu 21.10 has arrived. And over time, of course, this website will change. But generally speaking, if you click on download, you'll get several download options. And then right here for Ubuntu desktop, we have 2004 LTS and 21.10. Now what I'm going to do is download 21.10. Normally I recommend 20.04, but for this video I want to use the latest and greatest. LTS stands for long-term support and is generally the recommended version for most people, unless you're like me and you prefer Bleeding Edge. Either way, the process should be exactly the same, so it shouldn't matter which one you download. If the process does change over time, then I will update this video, so it should work either way. So I'll click right here for 21.10. And as you can see right here, the file name ends with an extension of .iso. And technically, this is a CD-ROM image, but nowadays we don't really use optical media for installing Linux anymore. Now, to be fair, if you are using an older computer, for example, a computer that can't even boot from a USB flash drive at all, in that case, you probably will need to create a bootable DVD for Ubuntu. But that should be a smaller subset of my audience. What we're going to do right now is actually use this same ISO image the same one that we would normally use to create a bootable DVD, we're going to use that to instead create a bootable flash drive. Anyway, I'll go ahead and save it. It's a 2.9 gigabyte file, so it could take a few minutes, but I'll click OK. And as we can see, it is now downloading. And the file size is currently 2.9 gigabytes, so it could take a few minutes to download. I have a fairly fast internet connection, as you can see, so it's going to be done in my case here very shortly. All right, so that's done. And next, what we're going to do is download USB Imager, and I will have a link to everything in the description down below this video. So that way you can go right to each of the resources that I'll be using. So what I'm going to do right now is just go to Google and search for USB Imager. And the reason why I go through Google is because I can never remember this URL. Again, it'll be down in the description below this video, so you shouldn't have to search for anything. But here's USB Imager. And if I scroll down here, you can see that we have a version of USB Imager for just about every operating system. And that's the reason why I use it in my videos. I mean, if you think about it, I don't know which operating system you are currently running. So regardless of which OS is your primary OS right now, there's a version of USB Imager for that OS. So what I'm going to do is just download this version right here. I'm going to save the file. And it's a very small utility and it downloaded pretty much instantaneously. So I'll go to Downloads, and we can see the two downloads right here. We have USB Imager and the Ubuntu ISO image. So what I'm going to do is just right click on this right here, Extract All. 
And now we have the extracted version of USB Imager right here. So the next step that we're about to do is actually only for those of you that have already used the flash drive to install a Linux distribution in the past. And the reason why we're doing this is because Windows doesn't always do a good job of allowing a utility such as USB Imager to delete all of the partitions on the flash drive. So if you haven't ever used your flash drive in the past to install a Linux distribution, then you shouldn't have to do this. But what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Start button, and then we can type CMD, short for Command, or the Command Prompt. And then we'll right-click on it and run it as Administrator. What we're going to do next is run disk part. And then we need to list all of the disks that we have on the system. And we could do that with list and then disk, just like that. And as you can see here, I have two disks. Disk zero is my internal SSD. So I don't want to mess with that one right now. But disk one is actually my flash drive. That's the one that we want to work with. And you want to be very careful that you are working with the proper device because what we're going to be doing is wiping out everything on that device. We want to wipe out the flash drive. Now it goes without saying, but I'm hoping you've backed up everything that's important off of the flash drive because this process will irreversibly remove everything on it. So if you haven't already backed up everything from that flash drive, please do so. Pause the video if you need to do that, and then we'll continue. So next what I'm going to do is type select disk. I'm going to select disk number one because that's the flash drive. Next, I'll type list partition. That'll help us see all of the partitions that are on that device. And what I want to do is delete each of these. Now that we've selected the disk and we've also listed the partitions, we need to select a partition to work with. So I'm going to select the first partition and then I'll type delete partition override. And I'll list the partitions again. We only have those two now. So I'll just press the up arrow because I'm lazy. I'm going to select partition number two. Then I'll delete it. And then three. And then I'll delete it. And now there are no partitions on that disk at all whatsoever. So now what we could do is type exit, exit again, and now we're ready to continue. So back in our downloads folder, since we've already extracted this right here, let's go inside it and let's run it. And this is a safe download, so I'm going to click more information and then run anyway. And here's USB Imager in all its glory. It's a simple application. But what we're going to do is click on these three dots right here. And then we're going to navigate to our downloads directory and then select the Ubuntu ISO image. We'll open it. Now here, as you can see, I have no disks at all that I can work with. That's okay. So in order to fix that, what I'm going to do is right click on the start button. Then we'll go up here to disk management. And then we'll right click here on the flash drive. We'll create a new simple volume. We'll click next, next. I'm just keeping all the defaults. And we'll do a quick format, nothing to customize there. I'll click finish. And now that's ready to go. And as you can see, now that I've formatted it, I can select the D drive and that refers to the flash drive. And this is one of those interesting things when it comes to Windows that the USB Imager utility needs you to have a partition, an empty partition, in order for it to wipe out your flash drive anyway and flash it with the Ubuntu ISO. I'm not a Windows developer, so I don't know why that's the case. It is what it is, but what I'll do is click right. And we can see right here that the flash drive is actually being written to. It's going to take a couple of minutes, so I'll let this run, and then I'll be right back. All right, so as you can see, the process is complete. We should now have a bootable flash drive that'll launch us right into Ubuntu, which is awesome. 
So what I'm going to do right now is safely remove the flash drive. And now that it's removed, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my laptop, and then we'll go ahead and set up the dual boot. All right, so here I am on my laptop, and what I've done is I've set up off camera a clean install of Windows 11, and when I set it up, I took over the entire hard drive. The reason why I did that is because most of you that are watching this video, you probably already have Windows installed, and when you buy a computer, well, of course, Windows 11 is going to be taking up the entire hard disk. Now, real quick, in case you're curious, what I'll do is just go over here to Properties, and I'll let you guys see some information about this particular computer. It has an 8th gen Intel Core i7 CPU, 32 gigs of RAM. It also has an NVIDIA GPU as well. And I'm running Windows 11 Pro, as you can see right here. For the hard disk, you can see that it's about a terabyte. And the clean install is taking about 43 gigabytes, so that's a pretty sizable installation for an operating system. But anyway, as you can see, it has taken up the entire hard drive. So I already went ahead and inserted the flash drive, and that's the next step. But at this point, I'm hoping that you've already backed up everything on your computer. You could use something like Clonezilla to take an entire image of your hard disk, that's even better. That way, if anything goes wrong, you have something to return to, especially if the process doesn't work out. Personally, I've never had this process fail, but computers being what they are, it's always a great idea to err on the side of caution, so make sure you back up everything, and then we'll go ahead and continue. Since I've already inserted the flash drive, what I'm going to do right now is reboot my laptop, and then I'm going to press F12 at the beginning, That'll help me get to the boot menu so I could tell it to boot from the flash drive. So here we have the boot menu. And as you can see, I have quite a few entries here. These are all just entries for other distributions that I have installed in the past. I probably should have cleaned up the boot menu entries here, but it is what it is. What we want to do is select the flash drive that we want to boot from. And in my case, I know this is the one right here. The verbiage might change from one computer to another. But basically what you're doing is you are pressing the key that is associated with the boot menu when you start up your computer. You can check your documentation if you don't know what button that is. For me, it's F12. That's a common one. Sometimes it's F11. There's other variations. And then what you do is select the menu option that corresponds to your flash drive, which in my case is this one right here, USB HDD. I'll press Enter. And as you can see, Ubuntu is starting to boot up. Now, I'm a little impatient, so I'll just press Enter to speed the process along a little bit. Now, right here, we have the installation menu. It's giving us the option to try Ubuntu or to just go straight to the installation. Now, the thing is, I don't recommend that you install any Linux distribution until you've verified compatibility first. Regardless of what anyone tells you, no Linux distribution is able to be installed on 100% of hardware. There are some edge cases. Sometimes we have hardware that doesn't work well with Linux. So what we should do is go through a few quick tests to make sure that this is compatible with our computer before, and I'm going to stress that before, we wipe out our current operating system. So I'm going to choose Try Ubuntu. And here we have a fully running Ubuntu environment that we can use to test out compatibility with. And make no mistake, we are actually using the true Ubuntu distribution right now. For all intents and purposes, this is actually Ubuntu, it's not a virtual machine. It's running Ubuntu off the flash drive. Due to the fact that it's being run currently off the flash drive, it's possible that it might run slower than it would run if it was installed on the actual hard drive of the computer. So while we're testing it, we're not really going to focus too much on speed because it's almost, if not always, going to be a bit slower off the flash drive. As for what to do to test it out, one of the things you could do is plug in an external display. If you have an external display, just make sure that works. If you have a printer or a scanner, plug those in. Go ahead and try those. So what you'll do is click on the upper right-hand corner right here, and where it says Wi-Fi not connected, we'll click on that. 
And of course, that's assuming you have a Wi-Fi card. If you don't, you might see Ethernet connected here. If that's the case, then you might already be connected to the network. So what I'm going to do is click right here, and then I'll click Select Network, and then I'll select mine. I'll type in the super secret password, and then I'll click Connect. Watch the progress up here, and it's actually already done. The Wi-Fi icon is visible, and it shows that I have very good coverage because the entire icon is white. And that makes sense because the access point is directly right above my head, so I'm less than a few feet from it. Anyway, now that we have an internet connection, what we could do is open up Firefox. The icon for that is over here on the left-hand side. And then what you can do is go to a website. So for example, I'll go to mine right now. And as you can see, the internet connection is clearly working because I was able to visit the website for this channel. On your end, I recommend that you watch a few YouTube videos or something like that just to make sure that audio works. And if everything works out, then we should be clear to go ahead and install it. So what we're going to do is click Install Ubuntu. This is the icon right here. Just double-clicked on that. We'll wait for it to come up. And here it is. So on this first screen, what we're doing is selecting the language for the installer itself. I'm going to leave mine here on English, but of course, feel free to change that if your primary language is not English. Next, on this screen, we are setting up our keyboard type. English US is the proper keyboard type for this particular computer. But if you have a different kind of keyboard, you can of course select a different language here and then a subtype here on the right-hand side, and then you can test your keyboard layout by typing right here in this box. And you know what? Everything looks good to me, so I'll continue. And we have a few selections here. Normal installation is what I recommend that most of you choose. That's the default anyway. That includes Office software and other things. Now, if you are a more advanced user, then you might want to go with the minimal install. That'll have fewer pieces of software pre-installed by default. I'm going to leave it on normal installation. And here it says download updates while installing Ubuntu. Now in my experience, when you check this box, there still seems to be some remaining updates after the fact, so it doesn't seem like it downloads everything. But if it saves time, I guess, why not? This box right here, I do recommend that you check that. That'll make sure that any proprietary hardware has the proper drivers installed, specifically proprietary hardware that Ubuntu knows how to handle, or is just compatible in some way. But unless you want a free software only system, then you should definitely check this box right here. It's just going to make things easier for you in the long run. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll click continue. And on this screen, we have the most important selection of the entire process. We have an option here to erase the entire disk and install Ubuntu, and we absolutely don't want to choose that if we're going to set up a dual boot because if you do, that's going to wipe out Windows completely. Now by default, it actually detected that I have Windows installed on this computer, and it's giving me the option to install Ubuntu alongside Windows. Just make sure that that option is selected. So we'll click Continue. And what we're doing on this screen is we are choosing which hard drive to install Ubuntu on. Now, I only have one hard drive on this computer, and the hard drive that I have has Windows taking up the entire hard disk. So what we're going to do on this screen is select our hard drive. I only have one anyway. And this hard drive, like I mentioned earlier, only has Windows installed. It's taken up the entire hard disk. So I have a decision to make. And that decision is how much space do I give Ubuntu versus how much space I give to Windows. And then what I could do is drag the handle right here left and right to choose how much space I want to give one versus the other. So I'll leave that up to you. But anyway, I'll go ahead and click Install Now. And then I'll click Continue. And then Continue. And now on this screen right here, what we're going to do is choose our location by clicking with the mouse as close to our actual location as we can. So I'm somewhere right about in here. Detroit, that's close enough. And what that's going to do is set your time zone and things like that. So in my case, I'm in Michigan. 
but you can go ahead and click wherever you are geographically, or you could just go ahead and start typing in this box right here if you know what your geographic region already is in terms of the time zone. But mine is set, so I'll click continue. Next, we'll go ahead and put in our user information. So I filled in my first and last name, and then for the computer's name, I went ahead and typed in Studio Laptop. It's telling me that this name already exists on the network. In my case, that's safe to ignore. That's not actually a problem. This is the only computer that can have this name. But on your end, you'll just name your computer whatever you want it to be named. Just keep in mind if you do any peer-to-peer -peer networking inside your LAN, that the name that you enter here is what it's going to show up as on your network. So just choose accordingly. And then here we have the username. It defaults to whatever your first name is when you type that into the your name box at the top. And then we select a password. So what you do is you type that in twice. So I'll click continue. And now Ubuntu is installing on this computer. So what I'm going to do is let this run and then I'll be right back. All right, so it looks like the process is complete. So moment of truth, let's test out the dual boot and make sure that it works. So I'll go ahead and restart. And the verbiage right here is reminding me to remove the flash drive, which I will do right now. And then I'll press enter. And here we have the grub boot menu. By default, it counts down from, I think, 10 seconds or something like that. And then what it'll do is boot the default option, which in this case is Ubuntu. And if you look right here, we have Windows Boot Manager as an option. So if I want to boot into Windows, then that's the option I'll need to choose. Now, it is possible sometimes that Windows might erase the Ubuntu bootloader. And if that's something that happens with Windows 11, then what I'll do is make a separate video for how to fix that. That's just a quick aside. Hopefully that never happens to you. But anyway, what I'm going to do is choose Windows because I want to make sure that Windows still works, that it didn't break anything. So I'll press Enter on Windows Boot Manager. All right, so here we have the Windows login screen. So let's go ahead and log in. And you know what? So far, so good. Windows hasn't broken or anything. It's clearly working. So I'll click on File Manager and then over here to PC. You can see that the size of the hard disk, the C drive right here, is lower than it was before. And that makes sense. We did actually split it so we can install Ubuntu in a different partition. So now that we know that Windows is working, let's go ahead and reboot yet again. And what I want to do is make sure that Ubuntu works as well. Now, what I did just now was I pressed F12, which again is the boot menu access key for my computer, and that wasn't required. If I would have actually just let it run, it would have automatically booted into Ubuntu. But I wanted to show you here in the boot menu that you also have an option for Ubuntu and Windows as well. And that might be a way for some of you to get back into Ubuntu if Windows ever deletes the bootloader or something like that. Again, hopefully you'll never need to do that. But the boot menu on the computer itself is yet another way to select the operating system at boot time. So let's go ahead and start up Ubuntu. And now I'm logged into Ubuntu. I wasn't able to show you the login screen because for whatever reason, my screen capture card isn't able to capture that. But after I logged in, I was able to mirror the screens so that way you are able to see it. Now, when you log in for the very first time, You'll be given the option to connect to any of these accounts right here. So if you do have an account on one of these services, you could click on it and then fill in your information. But I'm going to skip that in my case. And this right here is giving us the option to help improve Ubuntu. Most likely, you probably downloaded it for free. So sending some information to the Ubuntu developers wouldn't be a bad idea. The information doesn't include anything that's personally identifiable but it does include information about your hardware, your specs, and things like that. I'm going to choose no because I've already sent this information over to Canonical, the makers of Ubuntu, so I won't need to do that again. And here on the privacy section, location services are disabled by default, 
You can enable that if you want to use something like no maps or some sort of GPS mapping utility. But if you're not doing that, then you can leave that off. You can always change that again in the settings, so it doesn't really matter so much right now. And now we can install any of these apps right here by clicking on it and going through the process. I'll leave that up to you if any of these apps are something that you want to download. But I'll click done in my case, and we should be good to go. However, there's one more thing that I recommend you check. So if we go all the way down to the bottom left corner, right here, it's going to show us all the applications that are on the system. And literally the very first icon here is additional drivers. I recommend that you check that every time you install Ubuntu for the first time. So I'll click on it. And it's searching for drivers. And as you can see, it found one. There's a driver for the NVIDIA card. This machine does have an NVIDIA GPU. And it's already using the appropriate driver. If you have an NVIDIA card, it's important that you are using the driver from NVIDIA. Otherwise, when you try to play games, you are not going to have a good experience at all. Since I chose the option at the beginning to install proprietary drivers, it went ahead and installed this for me. But I recommend that you check additional drivers every time you set up a brand new Ubuntu install. That way, if there's any drivers that are needed for your system, then you'll find them here and have an option to install them. In my case, there's nothing I need to do because it's already using the appropriate driver. If you also have an NVIDIA GPU on your end, and perhaps it's defaulting to the Nuvo driver, you definitely don't want that because the Nuvo driver doesn't really work all that well with games, if it even works at all. So just make sure that you are using the newest driver that is from NVIDIA, which is what I'm using right here, so I'm good to go. And with that said, we actually have an Ubuntu and Windows 11 dual boot all set and ready to go. So there you go. I hope you guys found this video helpful in setting up a dual boot between Windows 11 and Ubuntu. I had a lot of fun making this video as always. And make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so because I'll be back again very soon with even more content. Thanks for watching.